Hello and welcome to the Black Hat Bushcraft Channel. Lately I've been doing a good bit of solo ATV riding on my family's land and a little bit abroad from there and on this property there's quite a bit of stout mud and there's some gullies and ditches and things like that that I have to traverse and it's always possible that I could get this thing stuck or get it wedged up somewhere and being by myself I may not be strong enough to get this ATV out and if that was the case I'm a good ways away from my truck and I don't get a good cell signal where I'm at so I may not be able to call for help. Um, obviously I could walk out within a reasonable amount of time and get some help but that's a headache. So um, one really good solution would be to install a commercial winch on the front of my ATV, an electric winch that I could use, but I haven't done that yet. So I'm carrying some very simple gear, a simple system with me in my kit on my ATV that if I should get stuck, I can get approximately a three to one mechanical advantage with a Z-drag style system. Z-drag is nothing new. There's other videos on YouTube showing that, but I have a certain way that I set mine up. It may be a little different from what you've seen other people do, and you may not be familiar with this. So today I thought I'd show you the simple kit that I carry to create this Z-drag, how I set it up, and let's do a test run. It's about 100 degrees out here today, maybe 98. High humidity, as you can see, I'm sweating hard, so it's a good day for training. So I'm going to get this ATV down in this gully back here behind me. We're going to set up a Z-drag and see if I can get it out. Let's get started right now. So when I'm going out on my ATV, and especially if I'm going out solo, I always carry a simple recovery kit which I can use to get my four-wheeler unstuck or at least out of a jam, kind of like what I've simulated today. And for that recovery kit, what I have here is some simple climbing grade rope. And this is a good heavy-duty rope. And this is a static line, so it's not going to stretch a whole lot as I pull on it. I also have about 15 feet of a really heavy duty webbing. This is one inch webbing, some military surplus stuff that I picked up years ago. Um, but any webbing like this would be good to attach to the tree, which I'll show you in just a minute. Better than rope, especially if you're concerned for injuring the tree or damaging the tree, this one inch webbing is better. Sort of like when you hang your hammock, you use webbing, same concept. And what I have here is a pre-made loop, which I can use to make a prusik knot to slide up and down on this line. And I'll talk about that and show you what that means in just a minute and this is just my simple kit which I always carry with me has my ridge line stakes toggles and things like that in it to set up my emergency shelter and that's also part of my ATV kit just in case I should get stuck out I have a way to make shelter for an overnight what I have in here for this purpose is two climbing grade carabiners and pulley combinations Right, so these are, again, climbing grade, heavy duty carabiners attached with pulleys. And then I have another heavy duty carabiner, which I can use in this system. So really all in all, we need a loop for a Prusik. We need three carabiners, two pulleys, and then our rope. And with those items right there, we can recover this four wheeler from being stuck. We can recover this four wheeler out of a gully like I'm about to show you now. And simple, not too expensive, definitely cheaper than investing in a winch, although a winch would definitely be a better option. But if this is what you have, this is a multifunctional system, good equipment to have, and this is a way we can use it again to recover our four-wheeler. So now, as you saw, I'm working with a black rope today. And when you go to demonstrate knot tying on camera, black rope is not always the best choice, especially on a natural background. It can be hard to see. So I brought along this orange static line with me today. It's a little bit smaller in diameter, but I think it'll serve well to see how I'm tying these knots. All I've done is taken a bite in our cordage that's just a bend as you can see here all right and what i'm going to do is tie a figure eight on a bite so i've made my bite and now i simply take that bite as you can see here and fold back on top of itself and i'm going to wrap around underneath of the rope and then i take my original bite and feed it through that loop and with that i have a nice neat figure of eight now if there's any space in there anywhere you want to dress that up and make sure you get it nice and tight is when you put it under load if you didn't it can create a little bit of a bind but not a big deal now as you can see i have a bit of a long tail here and whenever you have leftover rope it's always a good policy just to put a little extra security in if you can and so what i'm going to do is create a double fisherman's knot you can see i've just wrapped around the line twice and now i'm going to come back through both of those loops just like that and that creates the double fisherman's knot cinch that thing down and as you can see it neatens up that tail 
and it just adds one extra layer of security to my figure eight loop. Now I'll simply hook this to the trailer hitch on my ATV. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, or if you've enjoyed other Black Hat Bushcraft videos that you've seen, go ahead and click that subscribe button. If you like it, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to leave me a comment. I really enjoy interacting with all of my subscribers, and I hope to hear from you. Thank you for your time and support. Now the next step is I have my webbing here, and what I'm going to do is just find a center point for that webbing. Now I'm going to come back here to the tree, and just like we would do a hammock strap, I'm going to run one end through the loop, just like this. And now I have a nice wide attachment point to that tree. So as I'm putting a load on it, that's helping to disperse the weight and the stress of that across more surface area on the tree. So a little better for the tree uh, as far as pulling on this instead of rope, this one inch webbing is the thing to use. Now I just have to attach my first pulley and carabiner to this webbing. Now, to attach our carabiner to our webbing, it's very simple. And I'm not gonna do this the textbook way, but the way that I've done many times that works well for me. I just simply roll a loop back on my webbing, and this is gonna create a marlin spike hitch. Yet once again, another use for that awesome marlin spike hitch. And now I'm gonna take my carabiner and put through the loop, just like I would a tent stake or a toggle, and now I'm gonna cinch down and dress that knot up. Just like I said before, you always want to dress your knots up. Make sure everything's laying just as it needs to be. Carabiner's nice and locked. And as you can see, that's nice and neat there. Okay? And that's not going anywhere. But just in case some crazy way that that thing were to slip, I'm going to do just like I did with my figure of eight knot. And just come in here and put a security stopper knot. And just an overhand knot will do with this webbing. Makes a big uh, stopper right there on the end. And now there's little to no chance at all that this thing could ever come undone. If it starts to slip, this is going to bind up against that. So a nice, easy, quick way to set this up. Now what I've done is just picked up my original rope and I'm going to run it back through this pulley that we just attached. And I'm going to take up all the slack of that rope, feeding it through the pulley. All right, and I've taken up all the slack. I'm just going to lay this carefully down on the ground. Always want to try to keep our stuff out of briars and thorns if we can. So the next step is to attach this Prusik loop to our line. And I know I've shown how to attach Prusik loops before. And this one is black cordage on a natural background. Again, it's a little hard to see, but that's what I have. So bear with me. And what I'm going to do is take that loop and go under the rope. And the rule of Prusik is usually to wrap it three times. However, I've found that on this particular one, wrapping three times still provides a little bit of slipping. And so there's no rule that you can't wrap a fourth time. So where I've done three right there, I'm gonna come back and do a fourth. And that's just gonna give me more surface area on my rope. And with that, more friction, more contact, and it's just gonna give me a more secure hold. As with any knot that we've talked about, you always wanna dress that knot up, make sure it's laying nice and neat as it should. When you correctly tie a Prusik knot, to me, it kinda of looks like a fist on the line if that makes sense but again you can do three wraps depending on your cordage don't be afraid to go ahead and add a fourth if you feel any slipping that is a prusik loop and the beauty of that prusik loop is we can easily with our hand slide it down the line to get it where we want it to be all right but when we go to cinch that thing down it bites into the rope that looks like a good spot for me i'm going to go ahead and add my carabiner and put my pulley system right there. Now I just have to bring the other end of the rope back and run it through this pulley. And again, I'm just gonna feed the end of my rope here through my pulley and just start to take up all of that slack in the rope back to the tree where we installed our webbing and our first pulley. Now I'm just take this end of the rope, toss it uphill. Now that everything's set up, let's trace this thing all the way up the line so you can see the full system. There's our Prusik loop. And our first pulley you can see we have three lines coming back from that that's where we get that mechanical advantage three to one approximately this is going to be the line that i pull right here this coil 
You can see I have my shovel there because I can actually use a Marlin spike hitch and give myself a T-handle to pull from. And that's a really good tip for you in case you don't have gloves. Anytime you're working with rope under a bind, I strongly recommend that you wear gloves to keep your hands safe. Rope will burn you. If it starts to slip for some reason or you lose control, that rope can hurt you. All right, so how to create a T-handle on your rope in case you don't have gloves or if you just prefer a T-handle. And the advantage to this is you can just keep pulling back if you have space to do so and you don't have to use hand over hand pulling your rope. Sometimes that can be hard if you really are pulling hard. It's nice to just kind of put your weight and bear back with that thing. So to me, a T-handle is more comfortable. It may not be your preference, but just works well for me. So what I'm going to do is fold a bite in the rope and once again make a marlin spike which we've already done several times now and I'm just going to take that thing and insert my shovel handle and once again with any knot we want to dress that knot up make sure it's cinched in place well and then if you have some extra rope what you can do is come in and just wrap that rope around your handle just to make sure you don't trip over that rope or have it dragging in briars and things like that. The less your rope gets dirty, the better off you are. And now I can just grab hold of the shovel and put my weight back into that thing. And that'll give me a perfect uh, leverage point to pull from and get my four wheeler out of the gully. All right, just to show you how this T-handle performs, and notice again, I'm wearing leather gloves. If you don't have gloves, this would be a good way to improvise, but always wear gloves if you can. So I just put my back into this, lean my body weight in. I've gone ahead and kind of cleared myself a path here so I don't trip over anything on the way back. But you can see, I just put my whole body weight into that thing. And with that, I'm able to move that four-wheeler right on up the hill. And if I need to, I can take a quick break and just kind of lean on that to rest. Just kind of letting the four-wheeler go back down the hill softly there. So you can see how that actually works. All right, so let's see if I can actually retrieve my ATV from this gully. So as you can see, I was able to recover my four-wheeler from this gully. No way if I would have just tied a rope to that thing and used the T-handle could I have pulled it up like that. But that three to one ratio with the pulleys really helped me to get some leverage and get that thing back up out of this gully. So if you need it, this is a nice recovery system to have on board in absence of some type of a modern winch. All right, so I'd like to thank you guys for coming along for this Z-Drag system. I hope you found this information to be helpful, useful. Maybe, maybe not. You never know. It may be something you need in the future, but I just thought it would be fun to share what I've been working on. This is one of many projects and i uh, been doing a lot of ATV riding, as I said, so I think it's good to kind of do training and, and practice techniques that I may need while I'm out here. Um, when the cool weather comes back, I'll be back on foot quite a bit, I'm sure, but for right now in the heat, um, it's just kind of nice being an ATV. You can get the, the wind in your face, and when I'm going back to some of these further spots on my property, it just makes sense time-wise to bring myself back on an ATV, then set out on foot so I can record and practice and do things like that. So that's why I wanted to talk about an ATV kit, and this is one of those things. So I thank you guys for your time, interest, and support. I hope you'll like the video, subscribe if you haven't, and I look forward to talking to you with another video again very soon. Until that one, take care, and as always, God bless.